Welcome in the Sports Edge, powered by SportsHandicapper.com. Big weekend of action ahead. Lots to get to. We've got a man that likes to mop instead of being on time for the show. That's the champ, Seely McNeely. Uh, you said you're in a banner mood today, right? Uh, no, not banner, banter. <laughs> I, got, I got an animal running up in my attic all over the place. It's, I, it might be a person. I, I saw a movie, a person who lived in somebody's attic for, for two years. And, yeah, uh, is it, wasn't it called like the guy in the attic, the ghost in the attic? What was it called? Something like that. And I'm thinking there, there might be somebody up there. All right, well, guess what? This guy's always in a great mood. The great JB. JB, what's going on, buddy? I'm fantastic. Nobody's up in my attic. Nobody's in my basement because I don't have one. So I'm all good, dude. By the way, I think you told me that your girlfriend made that T-shirt you're wearing. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get me get her to make me some golf shirts as well. So, so she, she's really big into textiles. In shirt. She's huh? like textiles girl. She's uh, yeah. She uh, she she makes her own clothes and uh, and, and 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 does that. So uh, she gets me to be the extra large model for her. I like it. All right, Jamie, uh, we're going to get with you right here. Seal will be back with you in a minute, so you can go, like, uh, huff and puff wherever yeah, you want. Take- I'm going to see Miguel Cabrera get 3,000 hits tonight, so I'm excited. So uh, Listen, uh, he's the only guy in the league that needs a triple to get the first base. Listen, he scored a run from first the other day. Don't you know, know he's he almost, chugging along. He almost died. Yeah, all right. Yeah, never resuscitate him. In you, the you, if you were only so lucky to be in his kind of shape, we'll get back with you in a minute, Seal. You can get Seal's picks, of course, at sportsyanticamper.com, the champion of the Westgate, the champion of the world. But, Jamie, uh, lots to get to with you. Of course, no official selections this week in the team event because it's not something that really analytically is a great thing to bet. I know that you liked Horschel and Burns. I put a play on them. Uh, they're right in the mix right now. I took Zalatoris as well at Davis Riley. And then last week, you know, really close to having – a great shot of an outright and got a, a top five with Matt Kutcher. You know, you, at one point, three of your selections were in the top five and then three in the top eight. And they all, if, if a couple things went differently on Sunday, maybe you get an outright with Kutcher. It's, I mean, you, Tommy Fleetwood was like seven under on Sunday. So mm-hmm. there were a lot of good things going on with your selections there, but we got a lot of great stuff ahead, don't we? Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's been good lately. I mean, even sort of going back to Corrales, we had a, we had a decent pick with, with Cameron Percy, I think was second or third at 125 to one. Then obviously Scotty Scheffler at the Masters and then the Heritage with Kucha. Kucha, okay, came tied second, but he was never really threatening to or looking like he was going to win the event. Um, but he, he just played, needed a couple played. more birdies. He would have had a chance. Well, no, I mean, I mean, when you kind of look at it like like that, okay, lost by two shots. Um, why uh, par seventy one is what two hundred and eighty four shots if you play level par, and you lose by two shots. That's less than one percent of the shots. So right. it, it, it there, there is definitely a certain amount of luck there. There's a lot of a lot of um, momentum kind of stuff there. Obviously, Spieth uh, Spieth started the, first, the the last day with two eagles on the first four or five holes, I think, eagle the two par fives. And when you see that, um, you know, you kind of then, you look back in previous events as well, guys who are holding out from the fairway, guys who are holding out from from, from tough pitch shots. Uh, Scotty Scheffler at the Masters pitched in on the third, chipped in, I think, on the third hole. You do see that quite a lot, where the guys who have made a, a crazy start uh, or they've like chipped in from an improbable position. They get the momentum and they go on and win from there. So I mean, anybody who does want to play live in Benin, you know what? If you got a guy who's a couple of shots off the lead and he's uh, and he's holding out early in the round or he opens crazily, um, you, you, you know, you can definitely follow up on him throughout the last round. That, that's uh, that's something I definitely look at, and it, it's crazy how many times you see it. Um, but yeah, this week there's no you can't really judge and you can't. I, I, I work on standard 72 hole stroke play for the for the player. When you start introducing other people of different levels, um, you know it, 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 you don't know what the interactions. There's too many unknown variables in that. Um, going through the teams this week, sort of looking at it, you you had the top team there of Hovland and Hovland and Morikawa, which to me just looked weird. I I, I mean. I don't know, Dan. You know, you you know a lot of stuff. I, I I don't know if you've ever partnered up. I mean, these two are going to be in the Ryder Cup going against each other for the next right. twenty years, 
And now you want to play together? You know that the that their average age is the lowest in the field. It's 24 and a half when you combine their ages. Like Bill Haas, J. Haas are playing. Like their average age is in the 40s. But yeah, they're 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 both super young. They're definitely, I don't want to say they're they're not rivals in a in a bad sense, they're rivals when it comes to international play. But it, it was a very weird pairing. But I know that they're good friends and they sure, like I know, but there's, there's there's always a kind of I I I I I just I, I, I was completely, you, you, you know, to me, this is like being hatched at the Ryder Cup or people from the Ryder Cup or from the two tours have said, hey, listen, we got this event going on in New Orleans. Wouldn't it be cool for everybody if they could see opposite opposition players playing together? Uh, I guess that's the kind of the day and the age that we uh, that we kind of live in nowadays where everybody's lovey, lovey and you can't have rivalries and whatever else. But, uh, you know, that, that was kind of weird to me. Uh, the other ones, Shuffle and Cantley, they're real good friends. They've played together in the Ryder Cup, but again, just a, a, a short price on them. And and then you got Sam Burns and Billy Horshaw. I mean, both of them love Bermuda grass greens. Uh, Sam Burns has already won in uh, this year. Uh, Horshaw's come close. Burns is from Louisiana. Um, I think if you would see. Burns and Horschel and Shoffle and Cantley on a Sunday, one shot apart. I definitely take Burns and, and Horschel over yep. Cantley and and Shoffle because I, I just think I think they want to win it more. Uh, to be honest with you, and then uh, of course the other thing was uh, seeing Scotty Scheffler come out in this event with uh, with Ryan Palmer and uh, you know Palmer's uh, uh, Palmer's partnered up with Spieth and with Ram before, so. He's definitely going all out to try and win this event. He obviously, uh, he maybe he's resigned to the fact that he, he he can't win an event on his own because he's, he's round four. So he's you know whenever Ryan Palmer's in contention round four, you you back against him. Um, so I mean, maybe this is the only way he can get to Hawaii at the start of the year, right? Yep. Well, you did make a pick, even though it wasn't an official pick. You said that if you were going to bet it, you'd bet Horschel and Burns, and I and right they're right in the mix, a few off the lead right now after all shot as we record on a, a Friday afternoon. But listen, coming up next, uh, a, a brand new event in Mexico. Yeah. And, and of course, as we were basically in this, this stretch now where you got a major a month for the next few months. So that's all obviously exciting with the PGA coming up and the U S open. And of course the open championship, what are you looking forward to with this new event in Mexico? And well, by I, your time? yeah, I mean, I, I, I tell you what, these, 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 these events have got a new course that you've never seen before. Um, it's really interesting to kind of do because you, you you know nobody's seen it. The last the last event that was like this was uh, the one in the fall series uh, that they played at the Win in Las Vegas. Um, can't remember what event it was off the top of my head, but Jason Kokrak won it at the uh, the, the private wing course in Las yep, Vegas. Yeah, I remember that. And then it uh, it turns out that he was a, 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 a an ambassador. For for win casinos or something like that, so he had exclusive. Uh, you, you know, he played the course 20, 30 times more than anybody else. So I was digging around last week, and uh, Carlos Ortiz is the ambassador for this uh, for this company, or who are presenting this tournament this week. So now Ortiz is is playing god awful this year. He's he, he's not been in any events, but uh, hopefully that will keep the price up for Carlos Ortiz. And uh, like I said, I mean, you can't you got no course form to go off. Um, you know, recent form is kind of, you know, you, you've got the masters. Do you, can you really compare the masters to a, to an everyday PGA tour event? I don't think so. Then you got the, then you got the heritage the week after, after the long week of the masters, it's kind of up and down and all over the place right now. But, uh, you know, Carlos Ortiz is the, uh, is, is the ambassador for, uh, for this I, I can't remember the name of the company. Is it Vienta or something like that? I'm not too Viva, sure. Vivanta. Vivanta. Um, so I know he's definitely played that course a lot. And and, and, and you can sort of tie that into Jason Kokrak from last year. So uh, he's most probably going to be in the betting somewhere. Um, you know, then you're going to be looking at coastal coastal tracks that have been played for the first time and uh, and, and see where we can go from there. So, uh, you know, but it, it'll be interesting. It'll be a, a, a good puzzle to try and solve and to try and see who you can get there in the frame. And uh, and hopefully it'll throw up some outsiders because, like I said, Ortiz has he's got no recent form whatsoever. He's had missed cuts all over the place this year. Right. But he's got the experience there that nobody else has. So, you know, uh, 
how do the how do the odds compilers react to that? What do they put him up at? Uh, I guarantee you they'll probably put him up shorter than what they should, just out of caution. All right, you, Chris, can get those picks at scratchcaddy.com. They'll be up there shortly. Uh, and love stuff. Love it always from Jamie. He's really, you know, dialed into his system and knows what's going on there and uh, has really had some great success in the last several years uh, doing golf. So we'll continue to check in with the king of the Jamies. Oh, wait, we met you. There he is. You, you left me for a minute there. What, what in the Sam hell? I, I I apologize, dude. I mean, hey, you know, you live in a third world country. That's what you get. What I say? Oh, uh, but no, Jamie. When can we expect the the picks up there at Scratch Caddy? Sorry. When can we expect the Mexico? No, they'll be they'll be up there. I mean, obviously, I'm, 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 I I don't count this event, this Zurich Classic, for anything for recent form or anything like that. So tomorrow morning, I'll be starting. I'll, 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 we'll get the field for the Mexican event tomorrow. Sorry, tonight at five o'clock Eastern. Uh, I'll be starting on that first thing tomorrow morning, and they'll be up Monday morning. All right. Great stuff, as always. Check it out at <laughs> scratchcaddy.com. Jamie, get back with you in a little bit here. Let's bring in the world's most happy man. He's not even sitting up. His lights no. aren't on. He was mopping way, earlier instead of being way, on time for the add, show. Oh, if you add another name to Burns Horschel, you'd have like a law firm. Burns Horschel. <laughs> Burns Horschel at Goldberg? Yeah, there you go. You got a, you got a law firm. A great it. Jewish law firm. All right, so why don't you at least pretend you care on being about the show today? Sit up oh, for yeah. a minute. I know your back is a mess. I know you're a mess. I've told you not to wear that hat at least fifty times. You were mopping. Anything? I, it's it's a red hat. Yeah, all right, it's a red hat. Uh, you're a red guy. You were mopping instead of being on time for the show, but I'll forgive you because I love you. But let's have some fun for a minute here and try to turn your frown upside down. You still have been, as you always are, incredible at baseball. Uh, you've had some great first fives you've given out, some great totals that have won easy. Uh, you've been on top of the game, as you always are. What are your feelings now as we're getting closer to the first full month of the Major League season and what you're starting to see right now? Well, I, I, I'm going to give out a shout-out to COVID because if it did one good thing, take, for instance, the Cubs game today. It's beautiful. It's supposed to play a 220, right? It's supposed to rain all day till six. Right. Or instead of canceling the game, play another dumb doubleheader. What did they do? They put the game at eight oh five. They did the same thing yesterday in another game. They're learning. The, the they're, peeps they're, are learning. I mean, isn't that better? I would. I, I listen. I covered the Cubs for a summer, uh, and I remember it would get so annoying when they would not wait an extra hour or two. They could have played the game later at night. And they always, you know, if it was a, a lot of the Cubs games or day games, and instead of what you just said, putting it at 8.05 or 7.05 local, they would just postpone the game and do a double header right. or put it later in the season. It's, if they, and if they, there were several times, I don't want to say more than not, but pretty 50-50, that if they had waited a couple hours, would have been fine. Of but course. They, you have to understand something, and this is where I will give them a little leeway. When you've got – a team like the well, not just a team like the Cubs, but any team, unless you're you know drawing five thousand fans like the Tampa Bay Rays do sometimes, you have to to keep in account the neighborhood, the ordinances, people coming down there and parking, and you know Wrigleyville is it's right there, it's a neighborhood, so they they have a certain amount of day games for for a reason on purpose, so there's not all this crazy partying. People live there. I mean, I used to stay at a hotel less than a block away from the stadium. There are. It's a neighborhood. It's like a, it's like your neighborhood seal having a baseball stadium. So that's yeah, part been, of the reason. I, I've been there. I know. Uh, but um, yeah, you also went to a Phillies been the Phillies games like last week and stayed for three innings. You went for the third to the sixth. Actually, I was there for the third, fourth, and fifth. All right, third, fourth, so for worth less than that. Three. <laughs> At least you went with livers and onions. But no, what what are we seeing so far? Uh, you obviously are pegging a lot of stuff as you always do. But what what are we seeing so far early in the season? What are you what's what's kind of jumping out to you? What are you focusing on right now? Home runs are down. I don't know if it's the weather. It's been a little a little cold everywhere, I would say, but home runs are definitely down. I don't know if the ball to tinker with the ball again. We'll we'll find out soon enough. But I know there's a humidor in every stadium. I don't know if that's making it. Yeah, a, hum, a humidor for bats and cigars. 
bat, balls, cigars, and whatever. And they also want to put in there to have it 70% humidity. I like it. What, what do you think is important out. too, though? Because we've talked about this on the show, and, I, and it's it's kind of like what Jamie and, and me discuss, and when Cyburns is on, we discuss it. Starsky as well. You know, there are a lot of options out there these days, especially now in states like you and I live in, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, where there's legal sports betting apps, and there's a lot of different ways you can bet games. And I think it's very important that people understand, and like we always say on the show, we love for you to sign up. It's I mean, we're, we're doing this show obviously as a service to people out there. But also, you know, we want you to win. And if if you don't want to sign up for Seal stuff for for all of our picks, that's fine. We're still going to give you the the concepts and the ideas and what has made all of us, and especially Seal and Jamie, of course, too, so successful. But I think it's important that people don't try to like. I've had a lot of friends make ridiculously large baseball bets with no information, just because they're bored. And and that's a, it's a bad strategy, Seal. So what do you like the, the things that you give out and the research you do? Jamie was making not making fun of you; he was actually impressed. But he's like, Seal gave out a pick at four in the morning the other day. You're up, you're reading, you're getting info. You're always ahead of the spread. I mean, obviously there are some times where maybe it goes the other way, but eighty plus percent of the time it seems like if you're on a total, let's say the total you give is seven and a half, it's it's at nine by five in the afternoon Eastern time, or you know you're on a a money line for the angels and it's minus 119 next thing you know it's minus 150 so i think it's important that you kind of explain to people that maybe are watching for the first time what goes into you throwing things out there and there's days where you might not have a pick at all because you're not just going to bet to bet no like yeah yesterday for instance perfect example at i think at 5 30 in the morning i went out and bet the mets over seven and a half flat and it closed eight over. And naturally, the game fell 6-2, eight runs. So if you wait and bet, you get a push. If you follow me, you got to win. Big difference. Well, and we've talked about this over and over again because you can never talk about this enough. Whether it's football lines, whether it's juice, whether it's what you just said there with a total where instead of a push, a win, you get a push. You might be a smaller better. Someone watching this might be betting 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever. Might be betting $500, $1,000, might be betting $10. Whatever you're betting, if you're doing this to, you know, obviously have fun, but also make money at the end of the year, that people don't realize how much that adds up. I mean, it is, th- it could be thousands of dollars, could be tens of thousands of dollars based on what your, your unit is and you normally bet. And I think that people need to understand that is why you are so good at what you do but why they've got to, whether they sign up for the service or not, be smart with the way they bet. Because if they're, let's say they like a game and they could have gotten it at minus 120, but they end up taking it at minus 150. $30 is a huge difference. Yeah, they might win. If they win, they're getting less of a profit. If they lose, they're losing more. No, yeah. I mean, and it adds up. We're talking about 162 games in the baseball season. Right. And they play, it's every day. Every day sport, if you don't get the best of the number, Every day, you're not going to win. I don't care who you are. It's not going to win. You can't overcome pushing instead of winning, losing instead of winning. You can't overcome it. The, the, the numbers are so small to win. Yep. I mean, it's impossible, but people don't understand that. But I don't care. Well, you, you know, care about them. I, I care about them, yeah. You care I mean, about them. That's because you love I mean, your people. Like, yeah, it's like a public service announcement. Even stuff. when you're in a bad mood, you love your people. All right. Well, before we get out of here, and you really, it's it's been fascinating watching you start baseball this year. You know, you did the same thing last year. You've done the same thing for many, many years where, you know, you win every game. Of course not. No one does. But you really, there's days where you've swept the board. You've gone 4-0, 3-0, 3-1, 5-1, 5-2. And, and a lot of your bets are team totals and first five innings and obviously totals that you're very, you, you, as you mentioned, you can get a total at seven. And the next thing you know, it's eight, eight and a half. To, or like you just said, seven and a half. Goes over, you know, gets to eight. You win. Everyone else pushes. Uh, I think it's important that at this time of the season, you're really starting to get more of a read. You mentioned uh, on, on a previous show, you want to see pitchers go through, you know, a, a start or two. Are you starting to get a feel for some of these teams that are going to be pretty bad? Obviously, teams like the Pittsburgh uh, Pirates, and it seemed like the A's that started off hot but are not going to stay that way. Are there teams you're looking at? Are there pitchers you're looking at? Where are we at with that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, the two. Team total unders, I bet, this year. Oakland's playing well, but they're going to hit a wall. I mean, they're, right. they're, 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 their lineup stinks. I, I know they're winning, but uh, give it some time. Cincinnati started off being horrible. They figured it would be horrible, and 
they'll be trading anybody at school. The only thing Cincinnati has going for him is they have a, uh, a couple decent young pitchers, especially the guy going tonight, uh, Green for the Reds. He, you know, he throws over 100 miles an hour. The problem with him is it's his first season he's going to be pitching big innings. They're going to shut him down. I mean, even if he's pitching great, they're not going to mess with him. So after the All-Star break, you probably won't even see him. Yep, that's the way of the world these days. I mean, yeah. you, even going back to the Strasburg stuff, it really changes the, the game. We'll see. Keep up the great work. Of course, sportshandicapper.com. He is the champ, and it's only going to get better. So please, uh, you know, check out Seal's site. And we give, uh, you know, all of us have picks on there. Uh, and it's it's a great aggregate of all the great genius that is, uh, you know, the the starts with Sports Handicapper and goes all the way down. Um, all right, well, let's bring back Jamie in here. I have Seal- one question for you. Is that – Tournament in Mexico is that still called the Mexican Open? It's called the Mexico Open. Uh, I, I I don't know. Is there a country left in Mexico? I think they're all over here. I don't know. Oh, for the love of Christ, we've I, discussed I, I, this many times, Seal. I, 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 no, what this I'm is saying not a political show. Uh, okay, I didn't think there was anybody left over there. But yeah, I can always take your camera off. I can always do that. I don't want to, but I can do it. I think they changed the name, the Mexican U.S. Open. All right, right, before you put your foot in your mouth for the 80th time in the last 80 shows. Let's start with parting shots, Jamie. How are you feeling? We've, what do you got for me? Yeah, no, we've got the uh, you've got the world heavyweight uh, contest this week with Tyson uh, Fury with, with that mobster with, with 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 Tyson and Dylan White. And the one thing I'm going to say about this is, I mean, if Fury's already come out and said he's retiring, right? This is his last fight, and then he's trying one of his trainers, Ricky Hatton, is coming out of retirement yeah. to box. So. And that tells me that Fury's done after yeah. this fight. And there is no way in the world I would bet a boxer at minus 500 with his, in, in his last fight. He isn't training as hard. There's no, no way. No, he knows it's over. He's already making millions He's of fight. He's already done it. It doesn't matter. So if you want an outsider to win this week, put a couple of dollars on Dylan White. Will Fury win? Yeah, he's minus 500. But... Hey, you know what? It's not as if he's got anything left to fight for after this. Is is Fury going to ever say that he's tied up to that mobster, or is that going to still be a silent thing? Nah, I don't think so. That fight's no, at no, Webley, by the way, the right? One, the, one thing I, the, the one thing I did see is that uh, is that there uh, is 90, it's a $94,000 94, sellout. So there's 94,000 yep. people there watching, this, watching, the, watching the fight. Where did you get? What, what did you get at Vegas? 20,000, 30,000? Well, they don't. They don't fight in Vegas. They don't fight in the stadium. I'm sure someday. I understand that. I'm. I'm saying, but there's. Yeah, Vegas. It's, it's a, about, a, a stadium fight is a. It's a different animal to Vegas. I understand Vegas is the kind of, is the. Well, they show, they fought at Jerry World. The they, they fought at the Cowboys Stadium. There was a hundred thousand there for. I think it was. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, but they, I mean, there's only certain people who can do it. I did see that the the Metropolitan Police have brought in more st- sniffer dogs for drugs. So. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, you, you know what? There's probably going to be about twenty pounds of cocaine left at the door. Yep, just a, maybe 17. Uh, great stuff, Jamie. Please check out uh, scratchcaddy.com. We'll have picks for the Mexico Open coming up shortly. Seely McNeely, what do we got? Uh, is Tyson Fury the guy that's built like me? No. Well, not, you're not built like him. I don't no, know. He's isn't, not, it, isn't he a tall guy? Like, so real flabby? He's not yes. that flabby. He's in pretty good shape. Uh, he's built like me. I mean, you're a good-looking guy, but you ain't in Tyson Fury shape. I don't know. He looked a little flabby to me there a couple times I watched him. Uh, I'm going to give no, you I think, a, you're, I think you're thinking of Butterbean. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Tyson Fury I'm thinking of. Listen, um, I'm going to predict Miggy gets his 3,000th hit tonight. He beats out an infield single. All right. I'm going to be there. So what inning? First, the, watch the watch the broadcast because I'm actually going to go stand. If you've seen the, you know, the, the lead up to this 3,000th hit, there's a thing in the outfield that says 2,999 hits. I'm going to be right there. I'll be on TV. You will see oh, I can't it. wait. I think second time through the lineup, he beats out an infield hit with his blazing speed. All right. You're, you're amazing. You're an amazingly a, a jackass. My, a 19 bouncer to shortstop. Beat. All right. That is it for us today. I'm headed down to Comerica Park. Steinberg will be with us next week. Starsky will be back in the fold very shortly. But what a great job as always, even with him being late and mopping instead of being on time. The great Seely McNeely, Jamie, love you guys. I'm Dan Leach, the Squatch. Until next time, keep reaching for the stars. Believe in the dream. Dan Leach, Jamie, Seal, Sports Handicapper, Sports Edge, out.